Hey, hey there, YouTube. Baylor here from the Cozy Standing Setup, and today I'm bringing you a full ranking, full tier list of all of the ironclad cards in Slay the Spire. Basically, a quick breakdown of my thoughts on every single card and a ranking for each and every one of them. If you end up liking this video, please drop me a like below and let me know in the comments what your favorite card for the ironclad is. I'd love to hear everybody's particular favorite. Spoiler alert, mine is Searing Blow for the ironclad, although that's not going to end up in our, uh, in our highest tier rank for this character. Quick bit on my tiering philosophy before I jump into it. Basically, a higher ranked card means that I am more likely to take this card when I see it. A higher ranked card is not necessarily going to be better than a lower tier card in every situation, but basically these higher tier cards are more broadly useful or more situationally powerful in such a way that they're a stronger consideration according to their tier. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it, starting with the commons of the clad and Clash ends up being first here. I think this was a, this is a really variable card and actually one that's fairly hard to tier because it does really depend on what Ascension you're playing on. If you're playing on Ascension 10 or above when you have the Ascender's Bane Curse, that's a D tier for sure. This card is very powerful at zero cost, deal 14, but it's unreliable. Whereas I think it's actually an A or B if you're playing low Ascension. I think to give people some thought, I'm going to put this not in the lowest tier. I think that feels like a, a, a reasonable compromise. And I think there's a lot more utility even on high Ascension than people give Clash credit for. But the problem fundamentally with Clash is that it's unreliable. And if you can't count on it, that's no good. Clothesline. I think Clothesline is a very, very solid, takeable early card, but ultimately outclassed by a couple of other uh, weakness sources on the Ironclad, so I don't like it a, a whole lot in the early game, or even in the late game. Leave. Probably the worst of the AoE options for Ironclad. It's still perfectly fine at one cost. Uh, it's a great way to scale with strength. I think that that one also belongs in C tier. Tell you the truth, I don't have a high opinion of the Ironclad common pool in general, but we'll see where some of these fall. Boomerang. Boomerang, I think, is probably one of my favorite strength scaling cards. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage just on its own, but combined with any other source of strength, Boomerang becomes an incredibly efficient way to deal damage. So I like that as a higher tier. And Headbutt I'm going to put all the way in A tier because Headbutt is one of the Ironclad's best deck manipulation tools, allowing you to get back very important cards from the discard pile. Let's you loop limit breaks, get back a searing blow, get back an important damage card, just to name a few possibilities. Havoc. I think Havoc We'll probably have our uh, distinction of being the bottom, the first bottom tier card ranked here. Havoc is just unreliable. Try comboing it with uh, stuff like Headbutt or Warcry to put things on top of your deck, but at the end of the day, it's just unreliable. And uh, there's a real problem in that many of the other cards in the Ironclad pool don't necessarily be want to be played. Uh, when you're looking to play Havoc, uh, particularly stuff like Fiend Fire or Second Win, you can end up killing yourself with a Havoc at the wrong time, which I've learned the hard way. Shrug it off. Shrug's got to be a, another stellar, stellar common on Clad. It's block and draw at the same time, and I'm basically always in need of those, so Shrug's a great card early and only gets better as you go further and further in the game. Flex. Flex is a little bit uh, difficult to evaluate. I appreciate Flex for being a zero cost card. Ironclad does not have very many zero cost cards, but Flex is ultimately a card that uh, has to be drawn alongside other cards in order to be effective, and uh, that does impede its reliability a little bit. Flex is also a card that really feels like it needs an upgrade to be very effective, um, but try combining Flex with sources of artifact or debuff negation, and you can keep the strength for a really long time. Heavy Blade. I think Heavy Blade is a perfectly acceptable strength card. Does really big damage if you've got good strength, but doesn't do very much damage without your strength, often leaving you vulnerable while you try to accumulate it. Even then, in most situations, uh, you can get more efficiency from a sword boomerang or from a pummel. So I tend to find that Heavy Blade is perfectly usable, um, but outclassed in a lot of ways. I tend to like Twin Strike a little bit more. Twin Strike is just an easy card. It does pretty good damage on its own, um, scales reasonably with strength, and has a, a lot of other really helpful interactions. I think it ends up being one of the better strike cards on Ironclad. Anger, another zero cost card for the clad. Uh, I really appreciate Anger for being just kind of a, an, an added little boost to your damage. It's gr very, very good in Act 1 when you just need more damage to throw at an enemy and can retain, can remain relevant through to the late game if you get sufficient card draw. Try comboing it with um, Dark Embrace or lots of card draw from Burning Packs, Pommel Strikes, or what have you. How about Perfected Strike? Perfected Strike starts at 18 damage if you put it in your starting deck. 
and can uh, scale with more copies of itself or other strike cards to become fairly enormous uh, damage output. That said, I find Perfected Strike tends to wane in the late game, especially as you try to remove strikes. It is, however, quite usable, and the quote-unquote Perfected Strike deck is in fact a thing. I highly recommend you give it a try at some point. Just not every day. How about Thunderclap? Four damage and one vuln can be a nice little way to extend the vulnerable from your bash, uh, as well as to do a little bit of AoE. But ultimately, just like Cleave, I think is outclassed a little bit. There are better ways to do area of effect damage, and there are better ways to apply vulnerable for the thunder for the uh, for the ironclad. True Grit. This is another one that's very very good in both the mid game and the late game, giving you some block and exhausting a card at random. Most importantly, the upgraded version of True Grit lets you choose the card. I'd probably put unupgraded True Grit as a B and upgraded True Grit as an A. I think I'll put uh, ultimately True Grit in B tier. True Grit can be a, an important part of your late game defense and can be an effective part of creating an exhaust synergy with the Ironclad characters, so I quite like it. Iron Wave. Iron Wave seems on paper like an efficient card, but the problem with Iron Wave and with um, most Ironclad attacks in general is that the Ironclad cannot keep these attack cards relevant in the late game when you need to deal many hundreds of damage um, and very large amounts of block. If you cannot get these cards to be more efficient in the end game than they are in the early game, then they will not serve you. And that is unfortunately where Iron Wave tends to fall. With an upgrade can be quite acceptable. Uh, and if you're able to scale, generate lots of amounts, large amounts of strength and or dexterity, then it can be quite useful as well. But for the most part, ends up just being a little outclassed. Pommel Strike, I think, is another one of the strike cards that are very good. Offers very great, very solid damage. I'll put Pommel Strike in B tier. Very solid damage for one energy, as well as augmenting your card draw. Uh, notably, with a very good upgrade for another draw, could be quite good. War Cry, unfortunately, poor War Cry is a pretty low ranking. It, it gives you a little bit of ability to set up your next turn, just putting one card from your hand on top. Try comboing this with something like uh, Fire Breathing or with Havoc and you can find some success, but for the most part, Warcry is just too low impact for one card. Armaments, it's a defend, but it also upgrades stuff. Notably, upgraded armaments upgrades everything else in your hand, which is pretty dang cool, but just doesn't provide all that much in and of itself. I think I'll put it in B tier for its uh, unique utility. Doesn't provide all that much in and of itself. Excellent with Runic Pyramid, excellent with Sneko Eye. Anything that lets you get lots of cards in your hand will make armaments shine a little bit more. And the last of the commons, Body Slam. I think Body Slam is one of the best attack cards Ironclad has. This is because Body Slam upgrades to zero cost, which is invaluable. And doing damage equal to your block can become a serious amount of damage output with some of the ways Ironclad has to gain block, notably Impervious, or retaining your block with Barricade can result in absolutely monstrous Body Slams. Body Slam is one of my favorite ways to tackle the late game with the Ironclad. All right, moving on to the Uncommons. I think the Uncommons are quite a mixed bag for the Ironclad, but there's some really incredible ones in here. Battle Trance, draw three cards at zero cost. It's basically free card draw, and I almost always want one or more copies of uh, Battle Trance in the deck, but it's it's not an always take because it does prevent you from drawing future cards on your turn. And if you're able to draw a lot of cards via, say, Dark Embrace, or you have some other card draw engine going, then you won't want the Battle Trance. But overall, a very, very, very fantastic card. Blood for Blood, another very reliable, high damage card on the clad. Costs one less each time you take damage. Turns out damage is pretty easy to take. Not only do enemies constantly try to do it to you, but Ironclad has a lot of cards that will do damage to himself. And, um, especially with an upgrade to reduce the cost by one to start, Blood for Blood becomes this incredibly hard-hitting, reliably free card. Blood for Blood often doing what Clash wants to do, but more reliably and more successfully. Bloodletting. This card got a buff in the 2.2 patch. Used to be one energy, now it's gain at two. And I think since the buff, it's been a very, very reliable energy generator on the clad. One of his better cards. It does cost you health, sure, sure. But consider that with the two energy spent, you can often save significantly more than three health. Does need card draw to support it though. Burning Pact, I really like Burning Pact. The more I play with it, it doesn't feel like it quite draws enough cards. But uh, that's what Dark Embrace is for, I suppose. I, I, This one really feels like somewhere between A and B for me. I guess I'll drop it down into the B tier as I can think of quite a few other cards I want to put in A tier. Letting you exhaust a targeted card in your hand. Uh, one of only a couple of effects that can do this. And as a general rule, exhausting things from your hand is extremely powerful on the Ironclad. How about Carnage? It's a big 20 damage hit. One of the better, uh, especially early game attacks on the Ironclad. 
I'm going to uh, slap this in D tier as well. What I like about Carnage is that in the later game, if you don't play it, it just exhausts itself, and that could even be more block with, say, a Feel No Pain. Combust does area of effect damage, but slowly damages yourself. Combust is very, very good damage output. Um, the one hit point per turn can be daunting, but give it a try. You'll find that most combats don't last more than a few turns once you've played the Combust. Very, very good for patching a weakness to multi-enemy fights in a clad deck that is otherwise a little slow. How about Disarm? Disarm is, I, I rank quite high because it's a one card defensive solution to a number of fights. Any slow strength scaling or multi-attacking enemy, Book of Stabbing, Snake Plant, The Champ, your Act 3 bosses, and of course the Heart, Disarm can be in a massive, massive, massive amount of block by reducing those enemies' strength. So I rank it quite highly, and it fits in with Exhaust Synergies in general, which I'm going to be rating pretty high tier across the board, as I find it's one of the more reliable and powerful ways to scale on the clad. Dark Embrace. Now, this is the first card that I would I would put close to, close to S tier. It's actually pretty hard for me to evaluate either between uh, S or uh, S or A. Dark Embrace is bar none the most powerful card draw card that the Ironclad has access to. And I almost always want one or two copies of this card just to create a, uh, a sort of engine for my card draw. I think I'll put it in S. It's uh, also one of my personal favorites on the Clad. Um, so I'm, I'm personally taking this a lot more highly than, uh, than maybe even I should, but I'm okay with that. I really, really appreciate Dark Embrace and it combos with some, some of the other very powerful cards on Ironclad extremely well. Dropkick. This card gets better the smaller your deck is. And it can can lend itself to making infinite combos. Does need reliable, vulnerable to work. I think I'll put it I think I'll put it in B to, to respect how much how much draw power it can provide. Dual wield, really cool card. You can copy cards, whether they be powers or attacks, at their current cost. So uh, a funky thing to try with dual wield is make a card zero cost with madness or mummified hand or something and then make copies of that card. That said, dual wheel needs to be in the same hand as the card you're copying, uh, and you need to, unless there's zero cost cards, you need to be able to pay the combined energy cost of all of the copies you've just made, which tends to be a little difficult to do, making dual wheel a little bit tricky. I put that in probably C tier. How about Entrench, double your block? Also a problematic card at times. Just like dual wheel here, it needs to be in a hand with other block cards in order to function. Now, if you have the ability to retain your block with Barricade or Calipers, that is when Entrench really, really shines. But outside of that situation, I don't find myself taking it a whole lot. Try comboing it with Headbutt uh, for, for good success, though. How about Evolve? I have a pretty high opinion of Evolve these days. Not an always take by any means, but I think it's pretty good, so we'll plant, plant that thing in, in B tier. Evolve is useful across the board because many, many, many enemies add status cards to your deck, including guaranteed your Act 3 boss. Uh, and that means Evolve has always got some potential future use for your run, which means it's always worth at least thinking about picking up so that you can have it for the late game. And of course, combos incredibly well with many, many other cards that Clad has that add statuses to your deck, which I don't tend to... I don't tend to take very often. Oh, speaking of, I see we've got a sneaky escapee from the common list, which is Wild Strike here. And that is definitely going to be in my D tier personally. 12 damage, put a wound into your draw pile. My problem with Wild Strike is frequently that the wound slows you down by one draw far too often. Because it goes into your draw pile, you're also frequently likely to draw the Wild Strike before you can play Evolve, even if you have Evolve in your deck. Uh, and the amount of damage that the Wild Strike does just doesn't make up for that problem. So I, I tend to rank Wild Strike very, very low. How about Feel No Pain? Feel No Pain might also be up in the uh, S tier. Feels wrong to rank it differently than Dark Embrace, so I think I will put that in S, giving you block whenever a card is exhausted. If this feels wrong to you, then my response is to say, count the number of cards in Ironclad that contain the word exhaust, you'll find it's actually about a third of the cards. And this property means that it's very, very easy for the Ironclad to build an entire block strategy around this one card, feel no pain. All you have to do is exhaust a lot of cards every combat, and you will be in block city before you know it. 
about fire breathing? Fire breathing is very hilarious when it works, but I find it to be a little unreliable in the same way that um, Evolve can be a little, re little unreliable. It's very good AoE damage, and I definitely think it's uh, much better than the very original version of the card we had long ago. But it's still not quite there, not quite there. So Fire Breathing unfortunately goes to C tier. How about Flame Barrier? Flame Barrier I, I hold pretty high regards for. It, it's a little bit expensive to, to, uh, to pay for, but 12 block for 2 energy is not a bad deal. And because the card also does damage, Flame Barrier becomes this actually numerically extremely efficient card. Um, particularly if enemies are attacking more than one time. Uh, against certain fights, you'll get uh, maximum roasty toasty, say the birds, the heart, a few things like that. Pretty good. Love it with corruption. Love it in multiple copies. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get all access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments, and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Ghostly Armor, I think, also ends up pretty well rated here. Very, very efficient block. 10 for 1 energy is great. Although the ethereal property on this card is a little bit more annoying than it is on Carnage. You lose the block card if you don't play it, but what if you want it later? Hemokinesis. I think probably also in the B tier for me. Hemokinesis is extremely efficient damage. It does come with a small hit point price, but uh, just like the bloodletting, often because you're able to deal so much damage with the card, it means that you've saved energy that you can spend on making up for the hit point deficit somehow. It just does so much damage, uh, particularly with the upgrade, which is plus five. How about Infernal Blade? I think yet another uncommon that goes to the B tier, reasonably takeable, is how I feel about Infernal Blade. Random Ironclad attack at zero cost is a bit of a mixed bag, but generally speaking, pretty good, and sometimes you'll get a free bludgeon. Note that Infernal Blade cannot give you healing cards like Reaper or Feed, so it'll never be a source of that. But essentially, I feel like Infernal Blade is a decent attack card plus one exhaust. So if you have Feel No Pain or Dark Embrace, those S tier exhaust powers that I value so highly, then you'll get to activate either of them one time. How about Inflame? Just straight up strength gain. I don't think Inflame is the best strength card the Ironclad has, and I don't think strength in general is the best thing Ironclad can be doing at any given moment, but it's no nonsense, comes in the form of a power, you get to have some strength, it's very good. Great in the early game especially. How about Intimidate? Just one week to all enemies. Intimidate is a relatively low impact card, I do think it's a little bit underrated, and I do think that the upgrade to this card is quite good. Plus, uh, it becomes two turns a week to all enemies. That said, I don't think Intimidate often can justify its inclusion in the deck. It's just not a lot of effect for one card drawn. Uh, and unless you're able to draw a lot of cards, say with Dark Embrace, then it doesn't usually justify its inclusion. And usually you have something you know, you'd rather upgrade too such as the much better weakened card Shockwave, which I'm going to put up in A tier here. Shockwave is, I think, the best um, weak and vulnerable, both the best weak card and the best vulnerable card that the Ironclad has, providing basically all your needs for a whole fight in one card, especially if you upgrade it to five of each. But one upgraded Shockwave or two unupgraded Shockwaves is usually all the debuff you'll ever need. How about Metallicize? Three or four block every turn? I tend to rank, I think Metallicize can be quite good in the uh, early game, but overall Metallicize ends up problematic in the long run because it doesn't have the ability to scale its power up into the late game in any way. You can't make this block for more than four by any means other than playing more copies of Metallicize. Most enemies in the late game will require more block than you can feasibly provide with this card. So I didn't tend to think of Metallicize as a decent card, but maximum one copy of Metallicize in your deck. To put too many of these in is to, to fall victim to the late game and to be a little bit too slow. Not able to generate enough block or enough damage output on turns one, two, or three in many fights. Speaking of quick block, Power Through is probably one of the best quick block cards the Ironclad has. 15 block or 20 upgraded for one energy, which is just astounding. That is the best one energy block card in the whole game, bar none. 
It comes with a downside of putting two wounds into your hand. Unlike Wild Strike or some of the other stinky status generating cards though, into your hand is probably the best place you can put these status cards. You'll discard them at the end of your turn and you won't see them again for a long time, providing you ample time to play Evolve or Fire Breathing. Or while they're in your hand, you can exhaust them with other cards, particularly Second Win, which I'm also gonna put up here in A tier, exhausting all non-attack cards in your hand and giving you block for each one consumed. These two are a power combo together, uh, particularly if you have um, if you have uh, Dark Embrace or Feel No Pain in play as well. The combination of these two or better yet four cards is out of control as a uh, block source for the Ironclad and just, just one copy of each of these four will solve your blocking for any fight in Slay the Spire, really. Pummel, I think, is one of the other strength card that, uh, you know, uh, one of the other strength scaling attacks that outscales Heavy Blade or that out efficiencies Heavy Blade. It has the added benefit of the exhaust keyword to interact with uh, exhaust effects for Ironclad, which can be good or bad depending on how many times you want to be able to play Pummel. Also a pretty reasonable target for dual wield. How about Rage? Rage is zero cost block. Um, just like Flex, I really appreciate the inclusion of a zero cost a t a card for the clad, but it is problematic to get Rage into your hand on the same turn as a lot of attacks. So Rage ends up being a little bit unreliable unless you have a Runic Pyramid. How about Rampage? Poor Rampage. Very cool card in, um, in theory. It's a card that scales its damage each time you play it, so more and more and more damage with each play. Fundamentally though, the problem with Rampage is that it scales in a linear, not a quadratic fashion. I would much rather Rampage double its damage each time you played it. Um, that's what you can functionally do with Limit Break, after all. And the other problem with Rampage is that as a one cost card, it's just not viable to play it enough times to get it to be very large amounts of damage. Uh, ultimately, I find Rampage just never does the job that you want it to do. That said, Rampage can be perfectly valid in the early game as a solution to the first couple of elites or the first boss. Heck, it can even be a reasonable way to deal with the champ boss in Act 2, but uh, fundamentally is too expensive and too slow in its increase of damage to be a particularly viable endgame strategy. It's possible to make it work, but if you if you have successfully done so, congratulations, because uh, you've, you've won an uphill battle. That's how I feel about Rampage. How about Reckless Charge? I think this is more interesting um, status generating card than Wild Strike. I like that it's a zero cost attack, and I like that the status it generates exhausts, which can work with uh, Feel No Pain. So I think there's a bit more broad usefulness Excuse me, I didn't mean to put you in uh, D tier there. I think there's a bit more broad usefulness to Reckless Charge than there is to Wild Strike. Probably somewhere on the B and C tier border. I'm going to drop it down in the C tier, unfortunately. Rupture. I think Rupture is a somewhat slept on strength scaling card these days. Right up there within Flame, it's relatively inexpensive. The problem with it is that you have to lose health from a card of your one of your cards in order for Rupture to give you strength. Now there's a few cards in Ironclad's pool that'll do that. Bloodletting, Combust, the rare card Brutality. You can also take damage from playing curse cards with the blue candle relic um, or from curse cards in general. And I think one of the most um, unnoticed or unexpected interactions that a new player might miss is the Rupture with the Pain Curse. Pain does one damage to you each time you play a card. And every single time it does that, Rupture will give you strength. The combination does a lot of damage to the player, but you gain strength so quickly that it's uh, super powerful. So highly recommend, highly recommend Rupture with Pain. Searing Blow, this is my personal favorite cl ironclad card. Gets stronger and stronger with each upgrade. Um, but in terms of how often I take it, the answer is not very. I think you need to be offered Searing Blow very early in your run, and you need to upgrade it very many times for it to be worth it. The thing most people might miss about Searing Blow is that each upgrade is stronger than the last. So 12 goes to 16, but then 16 goes to 21, not 20, and 21 goes to 27. So plus four, plus five, plus six, and each one is one more than the last. Seeing Red. I think Seeing Red's probably one of the less good energy generating cards on the Ironclad. 
It's only a one-time use, and it's only plus one energy, uh, unless upgraded. And that means it's just a little bit low impact. Is great with Feel No Pain, is great with Dark Embrace. Corruption can make it uh, essentially upgraded for free. But overall, it's fine. Sentinel falls in the same boat. Also a way to gain some energy. Two or three upgraded in this case, if you can exhaust the card. Sentinel is very good with Burning Pact or with Corruption, but uh, on its own, just as a five block card, not so good. How about Severusoul? Severusoul is actually not that bad, I think, in its in its own effect. It does... Problem with Severusoul is that it's mostly outclassed by other cards in Ironclad. For two energy, 16 damage is just worse than most of the other things that you can do with two energy on Ironclad. It's worse than Carnage, it's worse than playing Pummel Strike two times, it's worse than probably whatever your Heavy Blade does, it's worse than Blood for Blood, it's probably worse than Clothesline. Well, the clothesline does a little bit less damage, but overall, it's just it doesn't do a whole lot uh, offensively. And the other effect, exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. There are a lot of better ways to do the same thing. Uh, Second Wind gets rid of all your non-attack cards and gives you block for each, which Severusoul doesn't. Um, or in the rare pool, Fiend Fire will do damage for each card in your hand, which Severusoul doesn't. Ultimately, all this means is that Severusoul is just a inefficient tool to do things that are better done by other cards. Spot weakness. I think I'm just going to put strength kind of across the board in B tier. Because that does feel well, like... Uh, that feels about right to me. It's a very, very beautiful offensive tool for the clad. Spot weakness is more strength than in flame, but it's a little unreliable. The enemy has to be attacking you, and you have to target an enemy that is attacking you. Particularly problematic if you have, say, Runic Dome, and you can't see who's attacking. Spot Weakness gets a lot better if you can hold on to it with Runic Pyramid, or if you've got a lot of card draw, so that you can control when you play it more. Uppercut. Uppercut's a pretty good weak and Voln card. I think I'll also put this one in B tier here. Uh, nice and reusable, but without an upgrade especially, it's just not very much of either debuff. Pretty good damage too. How about Whirlwind? Whirlwind is one of the better AoE cards on Ironclad. Skills really well as strength. If you can get a lot of energy, it's pretty beautiful. Um, but it's a little inefficient if you don't have any strength, uh, and particularly if you don't upgrade it. Whirlwind, in my opinion, really needs the upgrade. Uh, Whirlwind is fantastic if you're trying to go fast. I'll also put this in B tier, generally speaking. All right, on to the rares, Berserk. I wish, I wish this card felt better to me. My fundamental problem with Berserk is that you pay an immediate downside for a long-term upside, which is usually the opposite of how you want um, of how you want vulnerable cards to go, how you want uh, cards with downsides to go. You want to take a immediate upside with a long-term downside, usually. I think Berserk would be a lot better if there was a way to guarantee it on your opening hand. Like if you have a, a bottled tornado, it can be pretty good because turn one is usually relatively low damage thrown at you. I think my other problem with Berserk is that there are better ways to gain energy on this character, whether it be through relics or through different cards available to them. Brutality is kind of a similar, similar exchange here. It's a zero cost power that slowly damages you and gives you one more draw each turn. And the downside of Brutality is comparatively minor and can even be turned to your advantage with stuff like Rupture. Um, but in general, I really appreciate one draw per turn from this card, especially for longer fights. Feed. Feed is a very, very good... I would say, I, I think you could reasonably put Feed into the S tier, but I'm going to put it into A tier here. Feed is an incredible way to scale the max health of the Ironclad, basically allowing you to gain a permanent advantage from every fight that you're in. Feed can easily, easily scale Ironclad well over 100 health, and uh, if you're particularly diligent with it, you can go into the multiple hundreds, which is uh, beautifully, beautifully chonky. Often getting so much health that you can just take all the damage from bosses to the face and have no problem with it. Almost certainly one of Ironclad's best rare cards. How about Exhum? Put a card from your exhaust pile back into your hand, basically letting you duplicate any one of your exhausting cards. Uh, it works particularly well with Feed. I also like it with Disarm. And in general, it's it's pretty flexible. There's often a better rare being offered to you than Exhum, so I don't think it's uh, a too, too high tier 
card, but I like it quite a lot in general. Impervious. Impervious is no-nonsense block. The fact that it's two cost and not reusable, I think, keeps it out of the S tier. But Impervious is almost always something that I'm going to strongly consider when I take it. A very, very good block source for Clad and a really good way to get uh, a block engine started. Shrink down a little bit more here. How about Immolate? Immolate is probably one of the best area of, of, of all the area of effect damage cards. Excuse me. Immolate is the best. Generally speaking, it just does the most damage, has a fantastic upgrade for plus seven. The burn that it puts in the discard pile, often irrelevant, as many fights will be ended before you'll draw it. Really good stuff. Only a few cards left here. Reaper. Reaper does damage and gives you health back equal to the damage you dealt. You need some strength for Reaper to feel fantastic, um, but it's even decent without. Just not an always take. Definitely one of the better rares the clad has and uh, something that can seriously seriously empower a run works particularly well if you can get more max health via say feed limit break doubles your strength you have to have the strength in the first place for limit break to be good and i think i'm going to continue my trend of of just kind of saying strength is b tier in general but um of the strength cards limit break is definitely the one that can get the craziest Upgraded Limit Break does not exhaust, which means you can play it over and over again. Combo with Headbutt or with just a lot of card draw, and you're going to have a good time. All right, Demon Form. Demon Form is probably the most unwieldy of the, the strength cards, truthfully. It is a ton of strength. I think you'll end up being in uh, C tier here. Demon Form is a ton of strength, but ultimately it's a big cost to pay. Three energy means it's almost impossible to put in play without taking damage. And you have to wait multiple turns before Demon Form is any sizable amount of strength. You know, which is one turn later, it's basically the same as an Inflame was. Well, that keeps Demon Form a little bit lower in the viability here. That said, if you need strength and you have time, it's real good. Juggernaut. Juggernaut's a pretty cool damage card. I appreciate uh, the interesting ways that this card can scale, although it is a little bit unwieldy at two cost. For Juggernaut to do lots and lots of damage, you need many, many small sources of block. Combine with Metallicize, combine with Feel No Pain, combine with various relics that block, and Juggernaut can get really good. But on its own, by default, I don't think it's all that great. Barricade. Barricade's a weird one. A very big expensive card at three cost here, letting you retain block from turn to turn. If you're not able to generate excess block, then Barricade does absolutely nothing for you. But if you are able to generate excess block, then Barricade can be an incredible way to keep your block from turn to turn. I think this becomes particularly useful in the late game when enemies deal very large amounts of damage, but frequently have turns where they do not attack you. So Barricade allows you to generate block on those non-attacking turns and carry it over to the really, really big damaging turns. Definitely not a card for the early game, very much one for the late game, um, but one that can become an incredibly important part of a core strategy. I think that puts it in, in B tier for me, because it's, uh, it's very good at what it does, but it, it's only something you want sometimes. All right, Corruption. This is, this is a high ranker for me. Corruption, although it costs a lot, Corruption makes all of your skills free. This often means that the three cost of Corruption pays itself back instantly with the other cards in your hand. A big concern with playing with Corruption is running out of cards. And so when you have Corruption or if you're making use of Corruption, it often becomes correct to flood the deck with as many skills as you can find. Uh, in particular, there's no such thing as too many Shrug it offs with a Corruption. And Corruption will also combo with these other Exhaust-centric powers, Dark Embrace and Feel No Pain. Um, combining some or all of these together results in absolute silliness where all of your cards are free and draw more cards and you can just play your entire deck of cards on turn one. I consider Corruption the end-all be-all of ironclad energy generators where other clads, uh, other ironclad cards can generate two or three energy, you know, Sentinel, Seeing Red, Bloodletting. Corruption can generate unlimited energy, as many skills as you have in the deck for free, all of the energy you could ever need. And, and of course, of course, with Dead Branch, it's even nuttier. I almost always want one Corruption on an Ironclad run. Double Tap. Double Tap I like. It lets you duplicate attack cards. A lot of Ironclad's best scaling comes from non-attack cards, though, and I think that's where Double Tap 
ends up being just not quite as uh, as high impact as you might want it to be. I'd rather double tap, let me duplicate, you know, limit breaks or feel no pains or reaper. Well, I guess you can double tap a reaper, you know, or disarms or something. I'd rather be, have a way to duplicate powers or skills on the ironclad, particularly skills would be so, so wonderful. But double tap does some pretty sweet stuff if you combine with reaper, immolate, bludgeon, whirlwinds, just to name a few. Uh, Take a double tap and a drop kick, and you can create an infinite combo out of the two of them if your deck is small enough. Also noteworthy. Bludgeon. Bludgeon's big, dumb damage. I really like it. In the early game especially, Bludgeon is perfectly valued at uh, upgraded with 42 damage to kill almost anything in Act 1. It perfectly donks a Jawworm, perfectly donks a three, one of the three sentries enemies, perfectly donks um, slimes. Very good against the slime boss. It's less and less relevant the later you are in the game, but if you can make it free, or you just have a lot of energy to spend, then can be a pretty good way to deal damage. Fiendfire. I have a very, very high opinion of Fiendfire. Fiendfire essentially exhaust plus strength all in one card. So no matter what your deck is synergizing with, Fiendfire is likely to be very effective. Where other ironclad cards can scale, you know, can benefit from strength, four or five times, Fiendfire can do up to nine times your strength in damage, plus the base damage for each card in your hand. And each of those cards being exhausted can activate exhaust effects, be, be it from one of these S-tier powers or from a relic. Overall, a very, very fantastic, fantastic card. Lastly, but certainly not leastly, Offering, one of my highest tiers. I almost always take offerings that I'm given three energy, sorry, two energy and three cards. You can think of that as almost an entire extra turn worth of resources. And what Offering lets you do is either play so many attacks that you can just kill your enemy on the turn, or it lets you set up all of your powers, your defensive or scaling pieces all in one turn so that you're ready for the rest of the fight, whatever that might be. All right, here's my full list. Every ironclad card tiered and ranked. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.